Hello everybody, another weekend quickie. I don't do real long videos anymore. Don't think I really need to anymore. Hey, we're going to play a little, uh, little, uh, what's the word, uh, commonly abused phrase known as tale of the tape. And uh, we're going to talk about what is the big deal about this stuff called backcoded tape versus just regular, regular tape. Well, let's start with what regular tape looks like. Okay. You know, it's going to be typically kind of like brown, kind of like this, kind of a reddish brown. This one here is, is kind of a hilarious bit of uh, tape here, uh, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But take a look here. If you take a look at the backing here, it's a shiny brown polyester coating. I don't know if I can get this thing to come apart here. I'm going to try that real quick, see if we can do that. This is really ancient historical tape. Uh, somebody gave this to me said, hey, Vincent, I don't know what this is. Can you use it? And I said, well, I don't know, but thank you. Uh, so this is the, this is your typical normal red oxide tape. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. There's the, there's the uh, oxide side. And this is the more shinier polyester side. The lighting, it really sucks. Sorry about that, folks. So, um, so this is just standard regular tape. There, there's nothing special about it. Just standard ferric oxide. Uh, some people even go back to the old days of saying, uh, as the redder it gets, uh, the more it reminds you of barn door red oxide. And there is a, a lot of correlation and connection with barn door red, in case uh, you're kind of wondering about that. Now this Maxell tape here, on the other hand, a little bit different, okay? You got the oxide on one side, okay, just regular, nothing, nothing too crazy there, all right, just like the other one, except this is a lot better tape as far as calendaring and all that. But if you look at the back, it's kind of black. It's got a charcoalish, you know, barring my lousy uh, hand holding here. You can tell I'm not a professional, right? So, what's the idea of the back coating anyway? All right, what, what, what do I care about that? Well, a couple things straight away. Enhanced performance. Okay, not going into marketing and all that kind of stuff that everybody on YouTube seems to love, except me, um, is you get improved frequency response, you get better um, signal to noise ratio, and you can record up to 6 to 9 dB in peaks. Okay, that regular tape that I was showing you there earlier, that, um, that barn door red stuff, okay, I like to affectionately call it, even though it probably isn't that. You shouldn't go any higher than plus 3 on your peaks, okay? Because you're going to get a lot of distortion. Well, this is dependent upon a lot on your machine, okay? How it's, how it's aligned and everything. But typically, plus three on this regular stuff here, you don't go any higher than that, okay? But plus six, plus nine, all day long with this. I've done it too. It sounds great. Little uh, tricky stuff about uh, back coated tape, though. Uh, certain tapes uh, that suffer from the uh, sticky uh, shed syndrome, that was known as SSS. Um, this isn't one of them, by the way. Maxells are really good at not running into that, but the old Ampex, Quantigy, uh, some of the TDKs, they ran into that. So let's give you the quick <laughs> ancient historical <laughs> tape here. I'm sorry, I just got to laugh at this one. But this one here is uh, was sold by Sears. Okay, I have no idea where you got this tape from. I, and I this was sealed in plastic. Nobody ever used it. Probably should have never opened it, but who really cares? I'm going to try it anyway. I'll probably try this on my X7. Okay. Then, of course, this is the Maxell uh, UD uh, XL, actually UD5060B, 50, B, B meaning back coated. Okay. 50 mils, uh, about 60 minutes or so. 1200 feet. Uh, so, let me say 64 minutes. All right, that's fine. Okay. So that's kind of the, the difference between the two. XL Professional is a touch of marketing right there for you if you kind of love that. I love kind of the vintage packaging on this as well. Nobody does this anymore. It's kind of sad. Versus the more plain, almost plebeian look of the Sears here. Um, don't get that really flashy packaging. You got your tape legend on the back. How's it doing your, uh, on your Maxell? So you can pull your data back there if, if you want to. You can see I really do that, right? So basically that's the, that's the whole thing about what's going on with back-coated tape. 
And I, I tend to want to gravitate more toward that because I get a lot more latitude uh, with this uh, kind of tape than I do with, say, more traditional tapes. And I'm going to be honest with you. This Sears tape is probably really awful. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I don't even know if I want to try it. It'll probably clog up my heads and make a big mess. So I'm not exactly sure I'm going to probably run this. I'll try it once. I mean, I'll fast wind it in both directions, unpack it, and then I'll, I'll try to record on it and see how good or maybe not so good it sounds. Record definitely, we're going to definitely delay and record in seven and a half. We are not recording in three and three quarters. Um, I do all my recordings in seven and a half anyway. When I had my two track machines, I used to do all on 15 as well. I just want maximum performance. You know, you only live once and you want maximum performance. Why compromise, right? So the Max L is kind of my go to tape. Now I'm going to tell you, you can only get these used. Max L isn't doing this stuff anymore. Okay. So you're going to have to get them from like ATR. LPR and the, the current vendors of tape right now there aren't a lot of them okay but thankfully LPR for example is selling back coated tape so I can continue with the love of the uh, Maxell tradition I don't have to buy used I can buy brand new stock so there are no dropouts no compromises in performance no splices in the middle I actually bought a ten and a half inch tape and I've suspected somebody had spliced this can't prove it I'm gonna take a closer look but I saw a little uh, piece of splicing uh, backing tape uh, fall out, uh, say about halfway through my ten and a half inch reel. I'm gonna take like a set a closer look. But that's kind of the net net of uh, what in the world is back coating tape versus just your regular normal oxide tape. Is there such a thing as normal? I don't know. But just wanted to share that with you really briefly and uh, talk a little bit about you know why in the world do you want it. What's the, what's the big deal? Um, or if there isn't a big deal at all. Can you still do fine with regular, normal tape without the back coating? Sure. But again, get more headroom, better frequency response, better signal to noise ratio when you go with back coated tape. Like I said, a quick one. Not going to do anything crazy here. And my dinner is ready. So I'll see you all next time. I thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and uh, like. Um, if you like this video, of course. Um, don't like it if uh, you didn't like it, but I'm uh, going to be doing more um, videos along the way, and I'm going to do a comparison pretty soon of my X7 TX versus my A7300, so we'll talk a little bit about that pretty soon. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope uh, your day is going great whenever you're watching this and wherever you're watching it. Be good to each other. Uh, we got the holidays coming up. i got to be honest with you. We should be treating everybody like it's the holidays all the time, but hey, that's just me. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye.